I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. Shouldn't be trusting me, I could be making it all up, you know. Good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is that you are tuning in. This is Unapologetically Me featuring me. No special guest, just me. So, how are you guys doing today? I hope you guys are having a great weekend, a great Saturday. I don't know where you live, but I hope it's nice and warm and sunny by you. I'm in Chicago and it is 28 degrees with snow flurries. Awesome, right? It was just so nice last week. It was like 72 now we're back to 28 in snow. So, what are we going to talk about today? Well, the first thing I would like to bring up is that if you are new here um, and you find something that you like or you think that you want to stick around for a little bit, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button. I would love for you to like this video and I would love for you to comment on it, whatever that comment may be, as long as you keep it nice. You can say whatever you want to say, but please don't be mean to other people. That's all I ask. Be kind. Also, for the subscribers that I do have, welcome back and thank you so much for tuning in. You guys are really motivating me to keep going. I have hit a couple rough points, but you know what? I really enjoy doing this. Um, and that being said, um, with all the things that start coming out about certain cases, this one happening to be Bob Saget, um, I would love to go live. I would love to go live because, you know, I put these videos out or I throw some pictures up and, you know, there's a lot that people are saying and I, you know, I respond to you guys, you know, every time I see it and um, I would love to be able to interact <laughs> with you guys about all of this stuff because it's a lot it's a lot and it comes out and it's like you know and then sometimes you guys will be like oh did you hear this or oh I heard that and it's like I want to be like oh my gosh I did too why didn't I put that in the video or no I didn't know that let's talk about it you know but I can't do that because the video has already been posted and then we kind of go back and forth in the comments it would be really awesome to go live thing is I can't go live from my phone which is what I record on um, until I have a thousand subscribers. So it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. What I did want to say is when I looked at my analytics, 95% of my viewers that watch me regularly are not subscribed. Um, so I guess I just wanted to throw that in there. If you are watching me and you plan on sticking around, um, or at least you want to at least see this case out, I would love it if you guys would subscribe. I would be able to do lives then and, um, I really, really want to, to do that. Um, so anyway, let's move on. Let's move into the topic. All right, you guys. So I posted some pictures last night and this morning, um, I used a little pic collage to put them together and I marked them up a little bit and just kind of wanted to share what I noticed. Um, and I noticed a lot. <laughs> um, some of you guys noticed it as well. And um, even before I said anything about it, but uh, we're all starting to notice even more inconsistencies as this goes on. So, you know, I typed up a little script, not a big one, um, just to kind of get some points of like the photos that I showed and what I think about it. So also we're hearing now that he was sick. Okay, we, we in the report, uh, one of the women from the venue that he worked at was saying that he had claimed something about his hearing was off and he wasn't feeling really on his A game kind of thing. Um, but this is what he did. And so he was happy to be there. Um, basically, he just wasn't feeling too well. The family says, nope. And the social media that he posted to at that, that same weekend says, nope does it matter? You know, nope. And you want to know why it doesn't matter? Because whether or not he was sick, in my opinion, that narrative would go towards the fact that he slipped and fell, right? Because he had COVID still. But we have this autopsy report that states that while he was COVID positive, his lungs or anything else um, were not affected by this. So his lungs were that of a normal man. Now, he did have a 95% blockage in one of the main arteries to his heart. But again, the autopsy did not rule it as a heart attack or any type of heart condition that caused the death. Okay. Also, 
he did have a small bleed that could be consistent with either a fall or it could be consistent with a stroke. Now, a lot of people will bring up COVID, the vaccine, things like that could cause strokes and all that. Be that as it may, his cause of death was not a stroke either. So whether or not he was feeling well, whether or not he looked like he was feeling well or not, whether or not, you know, he had a heart condition or, you know, that was not the cause of his death. The cause of death ruled by the medical examiner, Mr. Joshua Stephanie, is blunt force trauma to the head or blunt trauma to the head. That was his cause of death. So that's what I'm going off of. Could all of this be a bunch of BS? Absolutely. It could. It could all be a bunch of BS. He could still be alive for all I know at this point. But we're going to go off of what I can find that's been written. Because there's so many rumors and so many whatever and hearsay and all of that. And remember, I told you guys in my other video about, you know, Chester and Chris, we can play the game of telephone all day. But these things that I'm covering are either there's photos of them or there's statements of them. It's been written. It's been documented. So... All the other things, I'll leave that to channels that like to do that kind of thing. Um, but I, I tend to steer away from that. Um, so, <sighs> nothing fits the narrative of a ground level fall. Illness or otherwise, right? Um, even a slip in the shower. Unless it happened the way I talked about it in my last video of the kind of bam, bam, bam. You know, that doesn't even make sense. And like, not just to us, me and a lot of you, but to a lot of people who are the top in their field for, you know, neuroscience and neurosurgery, you know, they do this for a living and they are like, this doesn't seem right. I've never seen it before, you know, and so a lot of people are like, whatever. So, you know, I started thinking, let's let's go in and look at some of the inconsistencies that we have been told and maybe try to figure out why they would want to do this or, or what happened, because I have kind of what I think. Um, and, and we'll get into that at the end. So if you want to stick around for my actual opinion, I will try to keep it quiet so that I can just give you guys the information. And if you want to hear my opinion, you can hear it at the end. So we have evidence that this should have been treated as a homicide. Um, it's all over this case. We have the bruising around his eyes that was now said to have been noticed immediately, even though at first they said there were no signs of trauma. Um, maybe that's not considered trauma. I, I don't know. I'm not an EMT, so I, I don't know their like protocol and what to say. But, you know, in hindsight, it definitely is suspicious, right? So now another thing we have now is this empty vodka bottle and this empty juice bottle. Now, I posted those photos yesterday. And as you can see in the garbage can, I see the juice bottle. Um, I see that glass that looks like it had orange juice in it. I do not see a vodka bottle anywhere in that garbage can. I don't know if you guys see it, but I do not see it. There was another garbage can that showed a mask in it, and I can't find that picture anymore. And I wish I saved it, but I didn't. And um, I just can't find it now. So pictures are now starting to disappear, <laughs> which I'm not surprised. Um, but yeah, the vodka bottle, I don't see it. And the, the thing about it is, is... When Bob Saget's autopsy was done, they did a tox screen, and he was negative for alcohol. Now, alcohol, unlike some other substances, can stay in the body for up to 72 hours. Um, I don't know if there's different cases to where it, it wouldn't, but I feel like something would have possibly been detected in his blood. Okay? It stays in the blood for 72 hours. Um, so... If it wasn't in his blood, then whose vodka bottle was that would be the next question that I would have. If he didn't drink it, who did? And wouldn't that kind of say he wasn't alone? Another question, or, you know, we all seem to want to know, these discrepancies that we have been seeing are coming in all forms and fashions, okay? We have, you know, the timestamps are inconsistent. The statements from police are inconsistent. The media's statements are inconsistent. The witness statements are either gone, redacted, or inconsistent. Um, the reports 
are inconsistent. So, I mean, inconsistency is up the wazoo here. Redacted evidence um, in the form of public surveillance footage. I mean, how is public surveillance footage redacted in this case? There's nothing private about being in public areas of a hotel. So why is this redacted from the report? Um, the 911 call is heavily, heavily redacted. Um, the personal effects being kept from us. What are these personal effects? Are these the phone records, you know, text messages, things like that? Because those would have definitely told us a lot had that information. And if those pictures are legit and that's really his phone sitting there, they had the phone. Why didn't they want to look in it and see anything? Um, no phone records were gathered. Fingerprints were not gathered. DNA swabs were not gathered. None of this was gathered from the hotel room at all that I'm aware of. Um, we have this adjoining door that was unlocked. Um, yeah, they say it was unoccupied. They say the last person left on the 7th. They, they checked out on the 7th. Well, Bob Saget checked in on the 7th. So there could, we don't have a time. So there could have been someone there at the same time. Um, I'd like to know if room 961 had an adjoining door on both sides of the room or only on the one going into 962 um, that I have not found out yet. And to be honest, I really forgot to dig. <laughs> Although I have it here that I was going to do that before I made this video, but I didn't. So I apologize for that. Um, so no proof of that. But I'm wondering if was someone in if there was was someone in that room that could have used 961 to get in the fact that it's unlocked is suspicious i i don't know i don't know and honestly i i have had hotel rooms with adjoining doors in them the first thing i do when i get into i wouldn't want one first of all i don't like that especially when i would travel alone i used to travel alone um i would the first thing i would do was go and lock that door and make sure that that door was locked and it always was locked but i always made sure um so who knows but um we have inconsistent crime scene photos and those i've been posting you know on and off for the last 24 12 to 24 hours um are they actually from that day i guess is my biggest question because it to me kind of feels like a lot of the statements the original statements were that it looked like he had passed peacefully in his sleep from like a heart attack or a stroke or something like that and so until the autopsy came back they said, you know, they, everyone was kind of thinking that. Um, so did they just not analyze the scene at all? They kind of maybe made the, the assumption that there was nothing to see here. That nothing happened. This is, you know, he passed away and they packed up and they left and they never processed the scene. They never took any photos. They never did any of that. And then by the time, you know, they the results came back and people were questioning things they had to go back and they had to stage the scene that is a question that i have that is alleged that is speculation only okay but it is a question that i have and i'm pretty sure i'm not the only one that has it i can kind of see some of you guys from your your comments and things that you're hinting towards that this may have all been a, a hoax uh, well staged at least and you know i'm kind of thinking the same thing uh i don't know that those photos were taken that day at least not all of them and you know people magazine posted that they had taken over 50 photos now we only have like seven eight nine ten and some of them are really hard to find again even though they were easy to find the first day they're starting to get harder to find again um most of the outlets are only posting like four and five photos so um there's 50 where are they <laughs> i'd like to see them um they also had a statement that housekeeping found him that was the first thing housekeeping staff found him or first discovered his body and that his bags were all packed up by the door and um you know it, he was ready to go like he was ready to get up and go well now we know that from the photos that uh his shit was all over the room still he still had the clothing hung up he still had his shoes out he still had you know toiletries by the sink because obviously he's probably gonna get up and like get ready and whatever before he went he he was not all packed up by the door he had stuff 
in many places. Um, so that's odd. And then the second statement that I found um, after that was, it was probably a few days later, there's another statement that says, oh, no, it's maintenance that found him. And then it's the third statement was, no, security found him. So we have housekeeping. We have maintenance. We have security. Who found this man? Okay. And, you know, the, the cops, <laughs> we'll get there in a minute. So I could see it being like, well, housekeeping went up. He didn't check out at three. He was supposed to check out at three. It's getting close to four now. So they send housekeeping up to say, hey, dude, are you ready to leave? Because we need your room. And uh, they're not seeing anything. And, you know, they're trying to get in and they can't. And they're not getting a response. So what do they do? They call maintenance to take the the bar off the door. You know, you know what I'm saying? Why can I never think of the word when I'm on camera? I can always think of it when I'm not. The, that flipper. Okay. So they have to call maintenance to get that off. But in maybe protocol, security then needs to be involved because we have a guest who's in his room who's unresponsive um, and they have a deadbolt on. So security comes along to be there just in case, you know, there's a some they get bum rushed by some crazy person or, you know, whatever. Security is involved. So that would all make sense that whoever was reporting it, one said housekeeper, one said maintenance, and one said security. Regardless, they were all there when he was found. Who knows? Who knows? But it would make sense, right? Okay. So, but that's not the only inconsistency here. So that's what makes all of that just questionable. And also, the cops were called via 911, okay? Body cam footage shows the moment they arrive, says media report, right? Um, but the timestamp is 9.46 p.m. So he was found about 4 p.m. And the moment the cops arrive was 946 at night. We had already heard things by then. But the cops hadn't been there yet. Did they even notice what the timestamp said? Were these second cops coming? Because according to the report, these were the first cops on scene. And they came directly after 911 was called. So then when was 911 called? How long really was this? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's comical, you know? It really is because it's like they, people are buying this up. People are believing this. And I feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad that they believe this crap because, you know, the media is going to sell you whatever the hell they want you to believe. And so many people buy it up like it's going out of style. And, you know, without questioning anything, um, so housekeeping went up when he failed to check out. That's what one of the reports says. It says housekeeping went up when he, he failed to check out. But another report said Kelly called for a wellness check. And that's when they sent someone up to his room and that they sent security. So did the, did the hotel send housekeeping up or did Kelly call and the hotel sent security up? So inconsistencies inconsistencies now um the ritz carlton orlando was a place that bob saget had stayed before um dl hughley did a little mini interview saying that the last time he saw bob was actually on an airplane when they were on their way to orlando and they both stayed at the orlando ritz carlton um and it's been said that Whenever Bob Saget would go to Orlando, he would always stay at the Ritz Carlton. So, um, how many times exactly? I don't know. Um, but it, it has been said that he stayed there multiple times. So, why? <laughs> now, I'll say some things are irrelevant. Hearsay, you know, irrelevant. Um, what is factual is that if this is true, the staff knew him as a regular. So a lot of people right now are focusing on why Orlando. Orlando was known for this type of community or that type of community. Um, that, to me, is irrelevant. Um, what makes, like, rings bells for me is um, if he stayed there that often, then staff would know him. And yet nobody of this, in the, in the hotel staff was interviewed with the exception of Orlando Nunez the valet 
And that was because he had that picture of him together. Nobody else there had been questioned as part of any of this. No one questioned, you know, him checking in. No one questioned him, you know, any of his whereabouts while he was there, whether or not they t he talked to anyone. Everyone that said anything was like a third party person or from a different venue. So if he's a regular there and they're not talking and they're, they're redacting security footage that was filmed there, that is a red flag to me. Um, why he goes there all the time, not my concern, <laughs> really. Um, could it be a motive behind what happened? Absolutely. But what I'm trying to say is what, what more concerns me is what happened in this hotel. And now that we hear that he may have known people, like he was a regular there, that seems a little bit suspicious. Um, and the fact that no one was really interviewed from the hotel, again, suspicious. Now, it would also possibly explain why they're being quiet and why they're not coming out with this, this surveillance footage, because they could have put that out. Um, it's public. You know, they're, they're a private entity and their surveillance is theirs to do with whatever. Um, and there wasn't a court order to keep that at first. That took some time. So if they wanted, they could have shown, here's Bob Saget, leaving it, you know. But, uh, you know, it just makes me think, you know, where they paid off. Money is usually the one talking when people remain silent. Remember that. You know, money can get people to talk, but it's also usually the number one reason someone's not talking. So, and we all know there's plenty of money to go around. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? You tell me. Again, like I said, this would be wonderful if we could go live and I could just throw this stuff out there and, you know, you guys could tell me, oh my gosh, and this, and da, da 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 and I think this, and I think that, and I really, really want to get there with you guys, and we will. We will, regardless. We will get there. <laughs> it is my goal and it is my dream to to get going on this platform and be able to do all sorts of wonderful things from it. Um, I have a lot of goals. Um, many of you don't know what they are yet, but I do have goals. Um, I really want to, to help spread awareness about certain things and, and we'll get there eventually. But right now, this story and this saga of Saget is like all I can think of. Um, I'm working on another case. Uh, it's a spread awareness on that's a very wrongdoing, messed up case. And, you know, but I just keep seeing new things about this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Everyone deserves a voice. Everyone deserves a voice. And anyone in the true crime, you know, niche of and community of YouTube wants to give the victim a voice. That is the purpose. And so that's what I'm doing. Whether or not he's a horrible person or he's not, he something happened to this man and, you know, whether it was just a botched investigation or something more sinister, I don't know, but I don't like being lied to. And, you know, I feel like we're lied to all the time. If I can call one thing out, <laughs> I'm going to do it. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye -bye.